Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Josh Playlock. I'm a commercial photographer and director here in Dallas, Texas. Um, this is part two of a new tutorial series we're doing on food photography. If you missed it, part one, uh, it's called Four Things You Need to Become a Food Photographer. Go check it out. So today we are talking about natural light and specifically how to use a window as a perfect light source for food photography. Um, if you're just getting started, you're probably not gonna have any strobes. I use strobes most of the time. I've developed a few techniques that I like to use to mimic natural light. Uh, you just don't have to chase the sun. It's consistent throughout the day. Um, and it, it, it's just my preference. The truth is though, if you don't have strobes, you can still make some amazing photography. All you need is a window with some natural light and um, your business. So this window is north facing and that's really important. North facing windows are always gonna have more consistently diffused light because they never get the direct sunlight. Um, if you don't have a north facing window, that's okay. We'll talk about how to work around that. But for now, let me get a surface on here. We've got some tomatoes I think left over from a shoot. So we're just gonna use those as our subject and let's dive in. All right, so what we've got here is I just threw up a nice piece of uh, this old distressed wood. It's gonna give us a nice base to be able to see the shadowing and sort of get an idea of textures. Like I said, I think all we had were tomatoes. I threw some tomatoes up um, and let's just take a shot. So I've got my camera here tethered to a laptop. We're throwing it up on the TV. That's just for me to have a reference. Um, I'll go ahead and throw these images up on screen so y'all can see too. It's raw, everything is straight out of camera. Um, we're not manipulating the shadows. I really want you guys to get a true representation of what we're seeing. So, so yeah, already you can see, like I said, I mean, if you've got a, a north facing window, you're in business, you know, the bigger the window, the softer it's gonna be. Um, first thing I notice is the shadows on the downside are just a little heavy. Now, like I said, this image is raw, so we probably would be able to pull those shadows out a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get a bounce card and bring it in, take another shot, and we'll see the difference there. All right, so we've got this bounce card here. Go ahead and use this clamp to pull it out. I don't want it too close, because I do like the moodiness that's coming into it. Um, but let's just give a shot and see. We simply throw that out. Yeah, so I mean, you guys can see it's pretty subtle, but it just pulls all the detail out of those shadows. So already, with just a window, you know, camera overhead and a simple bounce card. I mean, you, you could play around with this all day. You're at a really good starting point. Obviously it's not styled yet, but lighting, it's pretty solid. Now say you wanted to make it a little bit more dramatic in camera. Well, one thing you can do is just throw a couple cards up here to block some of that light. So you've got this nice big soft source, but say it's just casting a little bit too much overall and you wanna draw more attention to your subject in the center. I'm gonna show you a quick trick two more cards, and we'll make a much more dynamic photo. Okay, so we've simply got two cards here, white and black. We're gonna use the black side towards our scene. Um, and this is such an easy little hack and it makes a really interesting effect. Um, honestly, I probably would set it a little bit further back because I don't like having that hard edge. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But maybe you do, maybe that's the look you're going for. So. What we're gonna do is sort of create a shaft of light going across our scene here. Yeah, and so obviously that's way too strong. You know, you can back it off a little bit. And you can see that side really just opened up. Or you can simply feather it away a little bit. That'll also help make it a little less intense. But you see, I mean, you could spend a lot of time dialing this in. You, you see, though, how it really just helps add some more drama to your scene. Uh, and again, this is cheap stuff. Anybody can have access to this. It's not some crazy expensive gear. It's just simply playing with the light that you have. Um, but from here, let's go ahead and talk about uh, direct sunlight and what you can do if you don't have a north facing window and you're just constantly battling the harsh sun coming straight in on your scene. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a strobe up. I know we're talking about natural light, but I just want to mimic that direct sunlight and show you guys a few tricks of how you can soften that up at home. Just to make it a little bit easier to see. Pop another one. Okay, cool. So you guys can see, you know, if, if you don't have a north facing window and you're gonna have some times when you have direct sun, honestly, I think it's a kind of a cool look. Uh, it's pretty dynamic. I think it's a little bit more graphic. But if that's not what you're going for and you want that soft window light look, then what you're gonna have to do is find a way to diffuse it. Now, 
here at the studio, we've got a ton of tools to do that with. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw up a two by three frame of some light diffusion so that you guys can see how diffusing the light really affects your, uh, the texture and quality of the light. So let's go ahead and do that and give you a look. Okay, cool. So like I said, we've got a uh, little bit of light diffusion on this frame, on a C-stand. Show you what it looks like. And you can see it really softens things up. Honestly, we're a bit underexposed right now, so I'll go ahead and open up a little bit. Let's see, we've got nine right now. Let's go to seven. Okay, there we go. So, simply diffusing that light gives you a much softer look. We're a lot closer to that window light look that we had before that you get from a north-facing window. Um, now, if you're not in a studio, you're just shooting out of your house and you don't have access to the tools like we do here, you can use bed sheets, you can use pillowcases, you can use t-shirts, you know. I mean, a lot of those are probably gonna be a little too thick, but basically all you're looking for is some sort of material that's gonna soften the texture of that light. So it's what makes a hard shadow is a, is a smaller light source further away. So if you have you know a bed sheet and you hang it up in your window, that's gonna really, really soften out your scene. The other option is just to buy a piece of silk online. Go to B&H, look for, I like full stop diffusion. I think it just spreads things out nicely. Um, you can get quarter stop, you can get all different uh, varieties, different thicknesses, and they're all gonna have a different effect. But really, again, you're just trying to move the light source closer and broaden it out, and that's what's gonna make your scene feel a lot softer. So, this kind of co covers overhead. Let's drop down and take a look at it from an angled view. Okay, so here all we did was drop down, go to about a 45, I think a little bit higher than a 45, but you get the point. We're just looking at things from an angle and you can see how it affects your, your scene. Um, those shadows become a little bit more prominent. So we're gonna bring this fill back in a little bit, not too hard. And there you go, it's the same principle. Um, again, lighting from the top of the frame. Um, I, think, I think this is a great look. You know, sometimes depending on how reflective your surface is though, you may not want to go from directly behind because depending on your angle of reflection, it may bounce way too many highlights off of your surface and just completely blow the scene out. So if that's the case, then what you're going to want to do is go from an angle. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera around, um, shoot from my perspective, just so that you can see what it looks like if you light directly from the side. Okay, so here you can see, you know, same angle. Um, we just came around to the point of view where we're lighting from the side. And it just doesn't feel quite as dramatic as if you have that light source behind. You know, what you can do then is play with some of those tricks like we did before, introducing those two cards to bring a little drama in. Um, here, let's just hand hold it and give you an idea. So obviously that's not completely the right spot, but you can see how that knocking some of the light on the background just brings your attention to your subject a little bit more. Um, finding ways to create a little bit more drama here from the side I think that really helps out. So you can see how changing your angle that you shoot from really affects the way that the light interacts with your subject and the overall mood of this shot. Let's go ahead and do something that I would never recommend and bring the camera all the way around where your light source is coming from behind and see what that looks like. <laughs> okay, so you see why you don't want to do that. I think that's the quickest way to create a flat image that just has no dimension and no character. Not something I would ever recommend doing. So we're not even gonna spend any more time on that. I just always recommend don't do that. Have it coming from the side. Um, a little bit in front's fine, but still just from the side, you're gonna get some shadows casting. And that's what, like I said, gives you that richness to your shot. So anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found it to be a little bit informative. Maybe you've learned something, maybe you haven't. Hopefully, if nothing else, it's just brighten your day. Send me your images. I'd love to see what you guys are doing, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.